Two weeks ago, I released my short film, Encounter. I started working on this film in May and documented many steps of the process. In this video and two other videos in the near future, I'm taking you with me behind the scenes to show you how this film was made from start to finish. I'll be parting this behind the scenes series in three episodes, pre-production, production and post-production. So here is how pre-production went. In college, my film professor gave us students the assignment to shoot another film by the end of the semester. The only guideline he provided was that it should be a film about a coincidental encounter. I had that in the back of my head for quite a while, but I never really got an idea, mainly because my head was in the midst of other projects, such as the photo series I showed you last month. But then, one day, I had some time to think. Today I was at the doctor's and while sitting in the waiting room, just waiting for my turn, I came up with an idea for this film. I'm not really happy with the idea, but I think it could work out. The story so far is really not that much of a story. This film's going to be more focused on the visuals, on the aesthetic. So about an hour ago I finished writing my first script draft and I've sent it to a few friends. Hopefully some feedback will be coming from them and I don't know if the story will be changing that much. But at the moment the idea is that there are these two helmets in the forest and two people come up to the helmets. Screen fades to black and you just hear the voice over of a female saying do you remember how we met? <laughs> and uh, then you just see this sequence of this guy waking up in the grass and he's got this helmet. I don't know why I'm doing this, but I think it just looks cool. It looks kind of sci-fi, I think. Anyway, he walks through the landscapes, the beautiful landscapes of Austria and uh, meets this woman and uh, they have a dramatic walk to each other and their fingers touch and the sun fades everything to white and then he answers to her in that last shot that I have imagined in my head of them sitting in front, or their silhouettes sitting in front of the orange morning light and he turns to her and says, yes, I remember, yeah, it seems like a dream. And um, yeah, that's what I've written so far and if the feedback is not too harsh, it's probably going to stay more or less like this. So as you noticed, most of that draft stayed just like that. The helmets, the basic story, etc. The main difference is that in my head I was still thinking of a very orange, bright film shot at sunrise, which, as you know, did not end up happening. So after exchanging some thoughts with some friends, and pretty much not changing the idea, I began to plan out the costumes. I knew I wanted this film to look slightly post-apocalyptic and have my characters wear these survival-style costumes. I was slightly inspired by all the interesting characters one gets to see in Star Wars. I also wanted my characters to wear a helmet, which would also be similar to something you might see in Star Wars. Additionally, I had planned to have a pipe coming out of the helmet and go behind as if it were necessary for breathing. I was pulling a lot of inspiration from artworks I found on Pinterest. There are many amazing artists out there creating these images of people in very detailed costumes. I kind of used many of those as a concept art, but only for certain elements of the costume. If you saw the film, you will of course know the pipe did not make it into the film. I tried attaching one to the helmet, but it looked a little weird. It was too much. It looked like I was trying too hard to make a compelling costume, so I decided to go without it. After completing the ideas for the props and costumes, Melly and I went to the local hardware store to buy a few items I will need for the costume. Mainly, I was looking for parts which I could use for the weapon. I already had a long pipe as a base, but I needed these pipe connectors for the top and the bottom and two types of straps. One would simply go around the middle of the pipe and act as a grip, the other would be attached loosely to act as a shoulder strap. I also wanted to get some kind of soft material to wrap around the pipe to create various thicknesses of the pipe. For the helmets, I needed a bottle of white spray paint and black spray paint. Oh, and of course, I needed the helmets themselves. For the helmets, I went onto a site where people can sell their used stuff, which they don't need anymore. I was looking for a sporty looking motorbike helmet with a dark visor. However, dark visors turned out to be pretty rare and expensive. One day, I came across this offer for four helmets, two of which fitted my needs except for the dark visor. Each helmet cost only 10 euros, which in comparison to the other offers was really cheap. So I went with those. With most of the items we need collected, Melly and I started to construct the props. So today is props building day number one. Here we have the weapon. 
Uh, we've started already. Melly is helping me at the moment and uh, we just cut this part here off of the pipe because it was a little too long. Also, we've added pipe connectors. So that is what I'm making and we're going to continue with other textures and <laughs> features throughout this thing. We continued by wrapping the light grey strap around the middle of the pipe to check what it could look like and then we repeated the process but this time with glue between the strap and the pipe. Additionally, I firmly taped the end of the pipe to tighten the strap. So the next step is that we want to put this strap onto here and I've got this little thing here which needs to attach to one of these and this thing needs to go in here but up here and so we need to make a little hole to get this in there and then this can be attached. I'm planning to make a little hole with one of these and uh, I think this is maybe slightly overkill but we don't have anything else here. Kann man das nicht irgendwie so ein bisschen sanfter machen? Nein. Was das für ein Wind macht. Okay, voll schön. So that was our weapon of choice to make these tiny little holes to screw in the strap holders. Yes. After attaching the strap, we replaced the tape that had connected the ends of the strap so far with a black thread. Then it was time to make the helmets. The plan was to tape the visor and the other parts of the helmet, which should not be painted, to then spray paint the rest of the helmet with a matte white paint. Looking back now, I'm really glad to have chosen the matte white paint, not the glossy paint. As you can see in the footage, the original helmet was pretty glossy and I think it looks pretty terrible. The matte texture looks much better. Additionally, I had a small collection of screws, buds and other small items. I planned to paint black and then glue onto the helmet for some extra detail. <laughs> While the first layer of paint was drying, Melly and I continued to work on the staff. We cut out small shapes of the felt to stick onto the pipe. I was planning to create these different thicknesses of the staff by adding these and spraying them black to create some variety in color as well across the staff. Here is the finished staff. I didn't add much more. At the top I attached some cardboard to create this shape and below I added a short thread with some coin-like items hanging from them. The helmet's got a second and third layer of paint to really cover up the old helmet. In the end I didn't even add that many details. I only glued these two things to each helmet and decided to leave it like that because I felt again that more would go a little too far and again look like I'm trying overly hard. The last thing missing on the helmets was the darkened visor. For that I bought a darkening foil which is thought to go onto windows to darken them. So in my case, instead of attaching the foil to windows, I glued them to the inside of the helmet. With that step completed, the helmets were almost ready for the shoot. The only thing that got added before shooting was some dirt and brown stains on the helmet to make them look old and used. After making these props, I still had a lot of pre-production ahead of me. I hadn't even made a storyboard yet, so of course I also didn't have a shot list yet. I was also still missing locations. I knew that I'll be filming on the fields in my area, but not more than that. I drew the storyboard shot by shot, slowly constructing the cinematography of the film in my head. I was thinking to go for some slightly exaggerated compositions. Lately, I've really been enjoying this type of composition, basically taking the rule of thirds but making it more extreme. I wanted to have many shots with a very low horizon. Something else I had also already decided in pre-production was the aspect ratio. I would call myself a fan of the super widescreen anamorphic aspect ratio. It's just so cinematic, so I decided to choose the aspect ratio 1 by 2.35. 
I had to keep this in my head before the shoot and during it because I was going to shoot the film in the standard aspect ratio of my camera, so 16 by 9 simply because I do not have anamorphic lenses. I went on a location scout to find fitting locations and test the compositions I had thought of shooting. Finding the right place for certain compositions went pretty well. I found this spot here where I could shoot at a slightly low angle and create this clear horizon line. However, I realized something during this scout. My vision of shooting this film in the bright orange light was not going to happen. I got some test shots and tried color grading them later and it was not working out. After some time to think, I decided to flip the weather and make this film a cold, wet and blue film. Now what was still missing is the completion of the costumes. I had built the props, but I still needed to decide on the general outfit of my two characters and their accessories. Therefore, a few days before the shoot, Katya and Josef came over to test out a few outfits. You already know what we ended up with, Joseph wore this dark rain jacket and trousers with brown hiking boots. Additionally, I gave him my camera bag with multiple extras somehow attached to the bag to give it more detail. I think especially the wood I attached to the bag sold the survival look I was going for. Katya got to wear a green jacket, dark grey jeans and black boots. I added a few things to her as well just to make the whole costume a little fuller. I gave her a small backpack with ropes and a little torch attached to it. And also I gave her another rope which she hung around her shoulder. With those details added to the costumes, we were ready to shoot. I had scheduled the shoot in a few day times, but we had to keep an eye on the weather forecast to pick the right day. But that is content for the next behind the scenes video in which I'll be going over the production itself, the camera gear and how the shoot all in all went. I hope you enjoyed watching this first episode all around the pre-production process and you could find some value in it. If so, leave a like. It helps me out, it helps the channel grow a little bigger and I hope to see you again next week in the next video. Until then, goodbye.